and um, they're actually the first apes that came down from the trees and start walking upright and become bipedal. The first defining feature of becoming human. Actually, human first start to walk upright and later develop their brain power. Um, also, another feature is that I put an apple in there. This this is sort of like uh, a double meaning. Uh, you know, the the fruit of knowledge. And that's for also a key part of uh, becoming human. And also is that primates are the first one to develop uh, the vision of uh, detecting all colors because most animals can't detect all colors except uh, some primates and ultimately us. Because they're used to be being very successful at trees, they have to discern the different types of uh, fruits. So this that that's sort of also a, a double meaning. Also that that is a representation of a sort of like a symbolism of uh, retaining the uh, obtaining the uh, fruit of knowledge, and that's ultimately become us, Australopithecus afarensis. Ambulocetus. Ambulocetus is also a very interesting creature that they found in Pakistan, the ancestor of modern whales. Back then, during the Eocene periods, they're, they still have their legs. They sort of behave like, um, like crocodiles. And earlier than that, they sort of they look like wolves, actually. And, but they're actually the ancestor of today's uh, whales. So he's just he's ambushing there under the water, trying to uh, detect uh, any praise. Uh, one feature about them is actually they don't have ears, and what they do is that they use their large areas, their jaw, on uh, closer on the surface of the ground to detect any vibrations, and that's how they detect uh, sounds, everything. Ambulo, such as ambulance, means walking. Cetus is whale, walking whales. Ambulocetus. Gastornis. Gastornis is a large, terrorizing, carnivorous, flightless bird that stands about two meter tall. You don't want to come across with those ferocious birds. Back then, they rule during the time of Eocene, right after dinosaurs. It's these birds that it's the top of the food chain. All right, this one is a very interesting creature. I like it a lot. It's called Leptitidium. Leptitidium measures about uh, a meter from uh, nose to tail. It's these uh, unique mammals that that lives off um, bugs and reptiles, things like that, and being inquisitive. And he's just checking out this uh, dragonfly. Uh, this one is interesting. It's called Dinotherium. Dinotherium is actually... Um, Sort of like elephants of today, relative to elephants, is only that the tusks grow down from its jaws. And these are quite large mammals, actually larger than uh, today's African, African elephants. Dinotherium. Alright, this one is called Entelodon. Entelodon is uh, uh, relatives of today's uh, wild pigs, boars, things like that, only that they're a lot larger. They're they're about the size of rhinos. Very ferocious omnivores. And the only thing that can scare away an intelodon is another intelodon. So he's being really mean and nasty. Alright, this is Brontothere. Brontothere is sort of like uh, relatives of today's rhino. Only that its horns are quite unique in a different shape and sizes. The way I want to interpret it is that he's just being a little out of the blue and checking out all the little creatures that roam around him. Like that little bird stands on its back, sort of almost like standing on the hilltops or something. This is all color pencil and pen. It took me a long time because it's layer after layer after layer. Alright, this one is Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus is the relative uh, modern whales, but only uh, only about twice or even even triple the size of modern whales. It's uh, it's it's ferocious. Basilo uh, in Latin means king lizard. Saurus lizard, king lizard. This is actually a misnomer because it's not a reptile. It's actually a mammal. And um, back in the days, during the 19th century, in the out west of America, it's actually so common to find these fossils that people actually use their bones to make furnitures. 
Now he's just being uh, ferocious to try to catch that fish. And imagine, um, I, I, I'll think that that fish will uh, escape because it's coming out this way. <laughs> Alright, Indrakathea. Indrakathea is actually the largest uh, land mammals ever existed on Earth. They found the fossil in uh, today's uh, Mongolia. But, uh, but now it went extinct during time. What a pity. Indrakathea. It's it's about at least twice the size of modern elephants and giraffe. The largest mammals. Pterosaur. Pterosaur is the flying dinosaur. Very well known. Andrusacus. Andrusacus is interesting because it's actually the largest uh, carnivore mammals ever existed on Earth. And what's so unique about it is that it, these claws is actually the, predis, uh, the the predecessors of today's hoof animal, the ungulates. And it's really, the, 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 the closest relative of it today is actually goats and cows and bulls. But, but back then it's a ferocious carnivore. So in a sense it's really a, uh, a sheep in a wolf skin. Andrusarchus is um, named after the person who discovered it, Andrews, and Sarkis as in Arcus means ruler, as in uh, monarchy, uh, aristocracy, things like that. It's, uh, well, this guy really rules, you can tell. He's, he's just being really pissed. Maybe it's praise uh, fall underneath the hole or something. Ammonite. Ammonite is a very... Very bizarre looking interesting creature that live in the sea back during the dinosaurs period. Just very beautiful and unique looking creatures. Oh, this one is very interesting in terms of its place in history. Tiktaalik. Tiktaalik is one of the first creatures that crawl out of water and become amphibious and ultimately become the ancestor of all of us, all creatures today that live on land, flying, walking, including us. This is a very, very ancient creature. Tiktaalik is named after, um, it is actually derived from, uh, from, from these uh, Inuit language that they discovered the fossils around the North Pole area in, in Canada. So Tiktaalik, uh, he's really happy to crawl out of water. Well, evolution theory is that these little creatures actually crawl out of, out of necessity of evolution for survival. Basically, they try to get out of water to uh, avoid these predators in the water. And ultimately, ultimately uh, got off land and start walking um, on four legs and ultimately uh, walking on two legs and become us. But this is a very, very ancient creature. This is actually the most ancient creature in my series. Calicathea. Calicathea is a very unique, strange beast, a uh, mammal. It walks on its knuckles, sort of like gorillas of today. It eats like a panda and looks like a sloth from far away, but it's actually the most, most the closest relative of it today is horses. Calicathea. Coelophysis, I believe everybody saw Coelophysis, the dinosaurs, and Placeres. Now, all of these are, um, are already demonstrated in part two of the video. So, um, that's, uh, that, that's what I would like to share with you guys. And as you can see, all of these stuff, that's where our ancestor used to live with. The basic Desideratum tool. That we need. Okay, everybody. I hope you really enjoy my video, and I uh, hope it's being informative and uh, just stay inquisitive. That's actually the defining feature of becoming human, becoming us. And I'm trying to do more, and I'm trying to just to utilize my skill to um, to to illustrate these wonderful creatures. Actually, uh, one of my interests, is big interest is in evolution and paleontology, and that's why I, I want to start this project and finish this. Ultimately, I want to have more, so, uh, so I'll keep in touch. Uh, I might have more coming up. Alright, bye.